So my name's Rob uh, Crompton. I'm head of personal injury at Oakwood Solicitors. I'm just with Daryl at the moment, who is our in-house criminal injury compensation authority expert. Uh, and Daryl's agreed to meet with me uh, to run through a bit of information about what the CICA do, what the scheme involves, who who qualifies for a claim and how it works. So uh, hello, Daryl. Hello. Thank you for having me. Well, you're welcome. Um, can you tell us a bit about the scheme, the CICA scheme? Um, what is it there for? I can. So the CICA is the Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority. So they're a government funded organisation that's been created to administer compensation to what they put it as blameless victims of violent crime. Um, to be honest, the reason that it's been created is, is for that exact reason. You get individuals who have encountered uh, incidents on nights out or have been a victim of a crime that they really have nowhere else to turn to in getting the compensation for it. And that's where the CICA come in. Right, okay, so there's somebody out there who's willing to take the case on. Uh, where does the money come from? Uh, it's government funded, so right. it's all from the government. Okay, and what sort of injuries do they compensate? So the more common ones are bone breaks, uh, internal injuries uh, to the organs, uh, scarring is quite a common one, mm. uh, psychological injuries as well. Right, okay, and any other sort of injuries that they would compensate, um, domestic abuse, anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So there are two different sections um, to the, the CICA's tariff of injuries, is what they call it, uh, at the end of their scheme. So they have the more common injuries, such as the ones I've just described, such as bone breaks, um, scarring, but they also compensate for domestic abuse and for the sexual violence. So. Um, you more serious sexual assaults and you more serious domestic mm. abuse and, and periods of abuse. So how, how do they investigate these sorts of claims and is there a difference between investigating a, a physical assault on a night out, for example, in comparison to a, uh, a case of sexual assault? Is it How do they investigate the claims? Well, first and foremost, um, an applicant has to report the, the incident to the police. I think that's that's the biggest thing when, when looking to put in a claim to the CICA. So they have to be shown to have fully cooperated with the police, to have reported it mm. as soon as reasonably practicable. Uh, practicable sorry, um, That's the main thing. So there's a, a police report that the CICA can request and the CICA will determine eligibility initially on that police report. Mm. What's, once they're happy with the police evidence and they, they can see that you know the claimant is an innocent victim, what, what happens next? So depending on what the applicant is claiming for, the usual next step would be get, uh, getting a bit more information from the uh, applicant himself or herself, such as how they're uh, intending to get treatment for their injuries, uh, if there's anything further planned. Um, they do also have an alternate version of, of their process, which we've kind of coined the, the fast track scheme. Um, the fast track scheme is specifically for sexual assaults um, and more um, sensitive instance such as that. So the way they deal with that is they wouldn't require anything further than the police report. So usually they, they might request medical evidence, as I say, they might request the, the treatment of the injuries. None of that's required if you're going down the route of a fast track scheme. Right. Okay. So what, what sort of compensation awards are people given? What, what, what are the sort of types of injuries that are common and how much are they, they worth really? Yeah, well, it's going back to what we, we spoke about earlier on. So they have their own little tariff of injuries at the end of their scheme, which compensates for, for the more common injuries. And each injury has a set valuation. So one thing that we, we commonly uh, get in terms of claim is a broken jaw. Um, so a broken jaw can have up to four valuations ranging from the lowest, which is 1,500, which would be for a, a broken jaw in which there's been no operation and a substantial recovery uh, has, has been um, ratified by the, the individual. But that can also rise all the way up to 6,200. So that would be in the event that uh, an operation had to be had by the applicant for the broken jaw, and there was also a continuing significant disability for it. Mm. Well, any other types of injuries as well, just to give us a, a rough idea really of what yeah, so, so the scarring as well. So I mentioned scarring previously. So <coughs> facial scarring is a fairly common one. Um, so for the two different uh, conditions that they have, they have either um, a significant scar or a severe scar. Significant scar is 2,400. 
and a severe scar is up to 11,000. Um, it's a big jump then, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's dependent on location, on, on the severity of the scarring, to be quite honest. So if it's a scar that is, is over an eyebrow, for example, and, and is only around an inch long, they're more than often uh, more likely than, than not to give a, a significant scar and award. Whereas if it's a scar that goes from, uh, let's say, the, the top of the eyebrow all the way to the chin, then you're more often mm. not looking at a severe scar and award. So how do we, how does it, an applicant evidence the scarring? Then is it is it do they need to see a doctor about this sort of thing or not necessarily? So when it comes to scarring, um, this is one of the injuries that the CICA require images for. So. What they ask for from an applicant is photographs of the, um, the scar in itself. One thing that we like to make absolutely clear to our clients is that try and get as many images of the scar in as possible um, so that the CICA don't compensate for the, the wound itself or, or the incident, let's say, that there's a knife involved in this. What they do compensate for is the residual scarring. So don't take pictures from the scene and send those exactly. expecting them to you know determine yeah. that the injury is really bad when the victim's covered in blood. Yeah, and it's important to get different angles and um, images from, from different ranges, right? Uh, as, as good of lighting as possible. Obviously, we, we don't want photographs taken of uh, a scar where it's, it's a really, yeah, you can barely see it. Yeah, really blurry and, and really dark. Oakwood Solicitors is a multi service law firm. Call us now for a free consultation on 0113 200 9787. Oakwood Solicitors, traditional law, modern ways. So, what, so they, they, let's assume they've investigated. What, what happens if they've decided that for whatever reason they're not going to pay out? I mean, what, what are the reasons generally that they, they would refuse to make an award of, of compensation? Yeah, well, one of the things that we, we commonly experience with, with the CICA is that they'll, they'll reject them for arbitrary reasons. So it can be to do with... Um, I think the most common thing that we experience is missed deadlines. Mm. So a, an applicant who'll be running the claim for themselves, for example, um, may come across um, uh, having to get a GP report, having to get medical records, which they just don't have time to do. Mm. They've got their working lives, uh, they might have to see family, you know, things pop up uh, and that's completely understandable. Um, but sometimes the claim just gets put to the back of the queue, which it is something that, as as us uh, awkward solicitors, one of the things that we focus on is making sure that that doesn't happen. Um, which is is one of the reasons that we would recommend, obviously, getting a, a legal representative mm. going forward with the claim. Um, one of the sorry to cut you off there. One of the other things that we experience is uh, conduct. Um, so we've had quite a few experiences where. Uh, an individual will have their claim rejected for their conduct um, within the incident itself. Uh, more often than not, it's it's nights out. So uh, the, the CICA might read a police report and, and see that the claim's been rejected um, as a result of uh, a client being involved in a fight or, or an altercation. Mm. And the big thing with a CICA claim is that you have to be a, a blameless victim of a violent crime. Uh, so they have to be seen as someone who could have reasonably um, or couldn't have reasonably avoided the, the incident itself, sort of walking down the street and, and someone's jumped mm. up behind, for example. Um, if they've seen that an individual has, has run in, started a fight, mm. and suffered a broken jaw from it, they're more often not going to be rejecting it. But there are instances where an individual uh, will be walking down the street, will be hit from behind and will attempt to defend themselves. Mm. And it'll be written in the police report that there was an altercation and the CICA immediately decide well actually we've seen a chance to reject this um so because i assume they don't want to pay out absolutely um no absolutely it, not. is is there a deadline for being able to make a claim is there a time scale for there it? is uh, so the cica have in their scheme uh, a two-year deadline from the incident date um that can vary there are there are different exceptions to that but the usual deadline is two years after the incident date right and if they go on to reject uh, the applicant's claim, what, what options, I mean, do we do we have to take it? Do we have to just accept that or can we do something about it? No, absolutely not. So the initial uh, stage when it comes to a rejection, the initial stage is something called an application for a review. So a, an applicant would write down the reasons um, with obviously uh, a legal representative's help, uh, why they feel that the, the rejection is unfair, um, why the reasons that they've given are unfair and look to overturn that. So 
it's as simple as as filling in a, a box, signing that box and, and sending it off. Mm. Uh, that'll be given to a, a different representative from the CICA. So it's not as though you've been sent back to the same individual who's going to come up with the same uh, reasons mm. for rejection again. Um, um, is that it, game over, or is there something else you can do? No, so the, there's one more step that you can take, um, and that's the appeal process. So if, if you come up with a rejection or you're not particularly happy with the, the review decision, let's say it's an offer that you're not particularly happy with, you can do, go down the route of appealing the decision. So that will involve um, sending uh, more evidence, possibly, uh, for, for why you feel like the, the rejection is unfair to the first tier tribunal, which is the tribunal court services. Um, you will end up more often than not being in front of a hearing. So that will involve three representatives from the, the first tier tribunal. Uh, there's your, usually a, a tribunal judge who will head it off. Um, it's not as daunting as it sounds. It, I know it, it does sound as if it's a, a full court process. It's not. Um, it, it's a fairly re relaxed procedure. Uh, and I suppose in the grand scheme of things, not many of these cases will go that far. No, Usually absolutely get, not. Usually get um, dealt with at the review. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that you, you tend to get with these claims, um, you, right at the very beginning, you'll understand where it's heading. Um, if, if the rejection comes uh, initially and it's for, for something such as previous criminal convictions, let's say, um, then more than not, you know that it's not going to go any further and you're not going to be successful yeah. in an appeal. Um, if you're taking to appeal, you've got to be fairly certain that this is something that you can overturn. Yeah. So uh, what's the benefit of having a solicitor acting for you then? Well, having obviously spoke about that and, and going through the procedure of, of the uh, CICA claim uh, just then, it, it does sound... Um, fairly straightforward. However, they are deceptively complex. Uh, the, the requests that the, the CICA send out are confusing. You might have difficulty obtaining the information from a GP surgery or a hospital, for example. Um, and, and that's, that's what the, the solicitor and the legal representative is there for. It's, it's help whenever it is, is needed, really. Um, so you can pick up the phone, ask a question. It doesn't matter how, how small you think the question is or how significant, insignificant you believe it might be. Um, that's what they're there for. Uh, one of the biggest things is that statistics have shown uh, that it's financially beneficial to have a solicitor as well. Um, for example, between 2017 and 2018, 39,356 individuals had a claim finalised. 60% of those didn't seek legal help and 62% of those had their claims rejected. Um, applicants who, for example, received compensation with the help of a solicitor between that same period of time mm. actually received an average um, more additional £3,804. So that so the people who had a solicitor got £3,800 more on average than those that didn't? Yeah, that's correct. Right, blimey. Okay. Um, so if, if somebody was to contact Oakwood solicitors, would we be able to give them some, some advice on whether they've got a legitimate or an eligible claim that's likely to succeed? And uh, I, I guess there's no charge for that. Are we happy to speak to clients on that basis? Yeah, it's an absolutely free consultation. So we would take some information from you just to determine whether we felt that the claim was eligible and the, success, uh, the successful prospects of the claim. Um, and then obviously we, we would let you know straight away. Excellent. And um, how do how does uh, the solicitor get paid? How do, how do we uh, uh, recover our charges? So we would work on a, a no-win, no-fee basis. So we would take a percentage of the compensation at the end of the claim. Uh, it'd be 25% plus VAT. Um, so obviously we would be very much incentivized to get as much compensation as possible Ooh. for an applicant um, because that's what we would be getting paid in the end. Excellent. Well, thanks Thanks for, for clearing some of that up. I hope that people will find that informative. Um, we're going to put this on YouTube and there will be some links uh, below if uh, to relevant pages of our website um so yeah check those out thanks very much no no problem thanks for having me oakwood solicitors is a multi-service law firm our award-winning team is here to help you whatever your query may be call us now for a free consultation on 0113 200 9787 or visit us at www.oakwoodsolicitors.co.uk Oakwood Solicitors, traditional law, modern ways.